This is Your Anxiety Toolkit, episode number 174. Welcome to Your Anxiety Toolkit. I'm your host, Kimberly Quinlan. This podcast is fueled by three main goals. The first goal is to provide you with some extra tools to help you manage your anxiety. Second goal, to inspire you. Anxiety doesn't get to decide how you live your life. And number three, and I leave the best for last, is to provide you with one big fat virtual hug. Because experiencing anxiety ain't easy. If that sounds good to you, let's go. Well, welcome back, friends. How are you? I'm really happy to be here with you. I actually needed this moment to just slow down, settle into my chair, pull out my microphone and say, hey, how are my crowd? How are my people? How is this amazing community doing? Okay, so first of all, thank you for being here. Second of all, I'm grateful for you guys, so grateful, more than I ever, ever have been for reasons I will share in this episode. I have to first start by saying, I have literally got the best community. You guys are so cool. And I have learned this through a very difficult process in the last couple of weeks, months, year. <laughs> because this has been going on for a while. So for those of you who don't follow me on social media, I have been just recently public about one or two social media trolls who have recently really heavily and aggressively attacked me, (laughs) both verbally and mostly verbally, but with significant sexual content. And if this is uh, a trigger for you and you have some trauma around around this, I won't be giving details, but I just want to give you a little trigger alert because, you know, the degree in which I was being harassed on social media was sexual harassment. And I wanted to just reflect on this today. And, you know, I'm always going to be honest with you. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to share what I feel is helpful, and I hope that this is helpful because there is a really, really powerful message here, and I'll give it to you right up the front. The powerful message is don't ever allow a human being to change the way you think about yourself. That's going to be one of the main messages. The second message is I have been on this podcast for many, many years telling you guys how to manage intrusive thoughts and anxiety. And it turns out the cool news is that you can handle other social media trolls or people who don't really bring a ton of value to your life in exactly the same way that you do intrusive thoughts and anxiety, which is you just don't engage with them. You set strong boundaries with them, and you just bring your attention back to the things that you value, right? It's a cool, it's a cool approach. So let me tell you the story. For many months, I am, and other OCD advocates, actually, probably ones you know very well, have been receiving these most hateful, disgusting, just mean comments and messages. And that's fine. That's okay. I mean, it's not fine. But what I'm saying is that happens, unfortunately, to anybody on social media. Unfortunately, we live in a world where that is, you know, people can get behind a Instagram handle or a Facebook account and, you know, spinelessly throw a bunch of mean, hateful words at people. It happens all the time. A lot of my high-profile clients that I see in my office have reported this to me for years, that social media can be a really, really scary place. Like I said to you guys, and let me segue back to, this has made me appreciate you guys more than ever because you guys have been nothing but supportive to me. Kind helpful, warm, supportive with 
each other and me. It is so cool and I'm so grateful for you. I really, really am. But for almost a year, I have been getting these messages. And my approach was, like I said, to do what I do with anything that doesn't bring me value in my life, which is I delete it or I block it and I don't engage with it. So that's the piece I do with fear, right? So fear can show up. I don't block that, but I don't engage with it. I'm not going to give it my attention. Often it doesn't require my attention. It's just going to be there. And so that's how I handled it right, is with each time. But what was happening is I would delete and block this person or these people. And at a higher and higher frequency, they were creating more and more and more and more accounts under different names and doing the same behavior. The reason I knew it was one to two people is because they were using exactly the same hateful language. And so at one point, There's a couple of messages here, a couple of lessons for myself, and I just wanted to share them with you and reflect is, at one point, it was getting to be so disturbing that I started to share with a couple of really trusted friends what was happening. And they immediately said, huh, this is very similar to OCD work, right? You have the thought or you have the feeling and you don't do anything. You just don't engage, right? And I thought, yeah, that's that's so cool, right? But what quickly became apparent is they started to say, why, are you, why aren't you calling this person out? Why aren't you setting stronger boundaries with this person? And I had sort of reflected on this and I thought, well, I think underneath I had a tremendous degree of shame around this. I had a tremendous degree of distaste about this and I wanted to just sort of push it away. And, and it got to the point where at one day I basically deleted probably up to 20 accounts. I spent pretty much the entire day on social media trying to block this person. And they said, why Why would you put in all that effort? Just tell people that you're struggling with this and call it out. And I thought, huh, that's such an interesting thought. It was shocking to me that I had a, a ton of shame around that. And I wanted to tell you this, not because I just wanted to blab on about my experience, but I'm just hoping that you, if anything similar, if someone has been unkind to you in person or on social media, that you can recognize that when shame shows up, we tend to go underground. We keep it from people. We hide it from people. But shame lives in the darkness. It can't survive in the light. And so bringing it out into the light is where you actually have less pain because you've shared it with someone and they've acknowledged you and they've validated you and they're helping you. You're not alone now. And that was an incredible lesson to me, which is ironic because I talk about it all the time and I share about this concept all the time. And because it was happening to me, I got short-sighted. And so again, I'm going to keep sort of saying, if this is happening to you, catch how much you're silencing your own pain. Catch how you're doing it on your own in isolation, not sharing it with people. What was really wonderful is once that they said, hey, shout it out, let people know what's happening. You can't protect people from this all day. You can't be blocking this person all day just to protect others from seeing this message about you. Tell them it's happening. And you know what shocked me, you guys? Within four hours... A whole bunch of people who I know, but not that well, came out in support of me. They were ready to support me. And that blew my mind. It made me realize how incredibly strong this community is. It made me realize how much of a team we are, that they, on a topic that I had a lot of shame around, came out and stood up for me and said, we stand with you in solidarity. This is not okay. And I want you to know that you have a community right here who will do the same for you, who will stand up and say, please be aware of your stigma that you're saying about mental illness. Please let me educate you about what OCD is because it's not what you think it is. Please let me help you understand that depression is not laziness. Please let me help you understand that people aren't struggling because they want to. They're struggling because they're stuck that we're a part of a community who's willing to stand up for you as well. So this was just mind-blowing to me 
And for any of you who have been trolled on social media or harassed or have any kind of, you know, bully in their life, I want to really, really encourage you to treat it with the tools that you've already been given to manage fear. Don't engage in it. Stand up for yourself. Set strong boundaries with it. We just did a huge podcast on that the other day. Set boundaries with it. And then you return back to the thing you value. So what I noticed is this was so shocking and horrifying to me that I couldn't stop thinking about it for a little bit, right? And then I was like, wait a second, my children are right here. I don't value this human being. I value my children. I value my husband. I value my, you guys, right? My community. I value my work. I value my health. Let's practice while... While we have this discomfort, while this event happens, which means nothing about me, means everything about the person and nothing about me, while this happens, I'm going to go back to engaging in what I value. Now, my mind kept saying, oh, no, no, go back on, just check, 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 you know, just to see. And I'll be like, no, I'm not, because I am not going to let that kind of behavior change how I act today. I want to look back on today and say, I'm really confident and proud of that. And this was huge to me. And I wanted to share it with you because if you have a bully in your life, or if your fear is your bully, or if you're your bully, you can apply the same things, which is I am not engaging in any bully-like behavior. Not today, not tomorrow, because I matter. My values matter. The people I love matter. I'm not giving attention to this, which is ineffective. Now, what am I going to say? Totally easier said than done. (laughs) Let's be real. Totally easier said than done. But I hope that this podcast today gives you some empowerment that gives you permission to set boundaries and disengage with people who are ineffective in your life, who hurt you, who say unkind things, who do not treat you well. One of the most important pieces of self-compassion is self-respect, right? Self-respect comes first, which was respecting that you matter, that you're worthy, and that no one's allowed to say bad stuff about you, including ourselves and what we say about ourselves. Last piece of the puzzle here is that once I came out and said, hey, Everybody, this is what's happening. I don't endorse it. It's terrible. It's disgusting. Please, if you see it, ignore it. Treat it like an intrusive thought. Everyone came out in droves and supported me, DM'd me, commented, was so kind. What was so fascinating here is this person then created another account and said, oh, you just took it too seriously. I was just giving you compliments. And I was like, wait a minute, that's the definition of gaslighting. So for those of you who don't know, gaslighting is someone doing a behavior or acting in a certain way and then turning around and blaming you for it. It's a huge problem in communication. We want to try and eliminate gaslighting in communication. And again, I felt gaslit and my immediate response was, was I being too sensitive? Until that lasted literally like a millisecond. And I was like, no, that's gaslighting. If you're in a situation where someone is being a bully to you and then they tell you you're being too sensitive, that's gaslighting. You're not being too sensitive. You deserve to be treated well. You deserve to be taken care of. Really, really important stuff. So in those moments... If you do feel like someone's now blaming you for something that they did, your job is to step down into compassion and go, no, I'm going to honor that that was painful for me. This is the same for when someone goes, oh, I'm so OCD, or I'm so bipolar, or I'm so psychotic today, and they're using it as a joke And it hurts you. And then they turn around and they say to you, oh, you're being too sensitive. Why does everything have to be so PC? You're allowed to go, no, you just gaslit me. It's painful for me. Therefore, it matters. 
Therefore, it's real. You can't discount that. Really important stuff. It happens a lot around mental illness. There's a lot of stigma there. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for people to gaslight about that. And I really want to make sure we I brought that in as the final piece of this episode. So that's that. I'll keep fighting the fight. This person didn't go away. And I don't care, to be honest. I think I'm just, number one, what did I learn? That you guys are amazing. Number two, I feel so supported by you and thank you. Number three, I don't need to engage in this stuff. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't deserve my time. And number four, catch when people try to redirect blame onto you because that can help you go down a spiral of self-criticism and self-punishment. Okay. I love you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Last of all, I'm going to ask you another favor. I'm going to start mentioning this often in the podcast. My goal is to get a ton of more exposure with the podcast this year. It is a free service that we offer, offering free tools for those who don't have access to treatment, or if they do, it's to supplement that. If you have the time and you're interested, would you do me a huge favor and go and leave a review, an honest review? Let me know what you think of this show with this episode. I would be so grateful. I have decided that once we get to a thousand reviews, I will give away a free pair of Beats headphones so you can listen to the podcast on full volume and hear my voice full volume <laughs> at to, to one review by random. So I'm so excited to do that. And I'm really excited to get that up and running. Um, so go leave a review. I would love to see it. I might even start to highlight some reviews here in the next few weeks because I really, you're, I will be reading them and valuing every single one. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. It is a beautiful day to do hard things. That includes also sometimes being bullied by people or trolled. But we are strong, we are resilient, and we are able to do this together. I love you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. Please note that this podcast or any other resources from cbtschool.com should not replace professional mental health care. If you feel you would benefit, please reach out to a provider in your area. Have a wonderful day and thank you for supporting cbtschool.com.